let's start with this i'll give you a small introduction but before that small introduction there's one thing that is very necessary and that is you listen to me very carefully okay because if you don't listen you will skip a point and once you skip a point then it is gone okay so listening carefully is must rest whatever you wish okay so ashtakvarga so i will give you a small introduction where astak varga is first mentioned at that place in brit parashar hora sastra we popularly know it as bphs this is a particular query that all these things you know which are told in astrology this result of planet result of this that etc plus, plus minus whatever it is that is very difficult and cumbersome for a normal person to remember or even for a normal astrologer to utilize so there have to be a way simpler using which we can decode the horoscope mm -hmm. just a sec using which we can read a horoscope just a second right and this particular ashtakvarga method is not in contradiction with what other systems tell you okay fine now the thing is ashtakvarga ashta means a varga means divisions so the basic point is like you look at a horoscope from asan right that is a reference point and then we also learn that moon horoscope is also very important as moon is a reference point as well sun horoscope is also important as sun is a reference point as well and have you have you heard about nadis there is a thing you know that there is a buddha nadi which takes the position of mercury as the ascendant and then analyze the chart normally in the nadi that you uh, normally the nadi that we this popular right the horoscope is seen from the placement of jupiter and it can be done from the placement of every planet right what bad mars have done that you will not include him <laughs> mars is also so maybe in mangal nadi they have seen the horoscope so basically there are nadis from every planet where they make the position of that planet as an ascendant and analyze the horoscope right and nadi <clears throat> as at max see 80% of the things which you know read about nadi is more of fantasy rather than a truth point one and point two is nadi is astrology which is before the formation of the real astrology right then astrology came into being so it it is it is a type of an experimentation which says this did and after that they developed the methodology you know those things that you do before a, before making a research concluding a research finalizing a research right so vedic astrology is the finalized research not it that not is that you know that experimentation that happened before it most probably however so ashtakvarga is exactly the same thing all the seven planets okay rahu ketu are not considered they are not lord of any rashi they are not lord of anything at all right so rahu ketu are also a shadowy planet so they don't have a body as well right so rahu ketu is taken out of the part and all the seven planets from sun to saturn are considered so the thing is pretty simple you make a horoscope from the saturn's position wherever saturn is situated in a chart you will make a horoscope from that point you make that rashi as an ascendant where saturn is situated and from that reference point different planets will be situated in different houses right and while being situated in different houses they will support or not support some houses and for for a very very common example say any planet will not support eighth from it right because eighth house is death so they are not supposed to support it whereas 11th house is a gain and all planets are supposed to support it right everyone wants a gain so say if you make the horoscope from the saturn and your sun is situated in third house from saturn so basically eighth house from the third house that is the 10th house will not be supported by sun 
he doesn't like hmm? so the basic concept of astrakvarga is you make seven different horoscopes one from sun one from moon one from mars one from mercury one from jupiter one from saturn and one from ascendant right so sun to saturn seven planets plus one ascendant you make a horoscope from all these points keep planet in different houses from the planets and from that reference point they give points to different houses making the astrakvarga right every software gives you the calculation so i'm not going deeper into the calculation you have any software with you and this thing that you see right here or rather say here is the astrakvarga chart for any particular horoscope right for a horoscope for a prashna or for anything that is astrology this can be done now there are two things into it right as i told you from the position of a planet different planet give points that is negative or positive one negative point or one positive point to different houses right so this one that you see as as is the ashtakvarga for the ascendant where ascendant is taken as the prime point and different planets in different houses give different points so this is for the ascendant this is for the sun this for the moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn right so the ashtakvarga of mars means that from the position of mars which is situated in the 7th house that is highlighted in dark right now right from that point if you make the position of mars as an ascendant what planets in different houses will do right so with mars there are many planets with mars right and they are supposed to support the 11th from it right so you see 11th from the position of mars which comes to the 5th house there are six points whereas third house indicates a struggle so planets keys to give their power in the third house which indicates struggle right so third house from mars is having minimum points were almost one point right so these are bhinn ashtak vargas right when you make every planet as an ascendant and look at or try to find different planetary positions from that reference point and the houses they support or they don't support it is known as bhinn ashtak varga which is separate for every planet okay and when all these tables as table of ascendant that is denoted by as or the table of sun moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn when all of them are combined together it makes the sav or the sarvashtak varga right it is a culmination or addition of all of it right this point is extremely clear good now there is one very basic point that have to be extremely clear to you so we have learned that there are eight reference points from a planet and all eight of them will give either a positive point or a negative point right in these different houses you see some numbers written the maximum of this number will be 8 if all the eight planets are giving it good points the number will be 8 that is the best if no planet is giving the point the number will be 0 the mid will be 4 right half of 8 will be 4 if half of the planets are giving the point and half are not giving the point it will be 4 right so any house in this bhinn ashtak vargas separate ashtak vargas of planets any house which is having four point gives you a mixed result some good result some bad result any house that is having more than four points becomes good and any house that have less than four points becomes bad that is extremely clear right and it is very proportionate so four points is mixed six is good seven is even more good eight is best right three is bad two is even more bad one is worst and zero is to hell broke loose that very problematic right so this is the concept for the separate ashtak vargas now one more point so when you add all these ashtak vargas to make this horoscope which is the culminative ashtak varga known as sarv ashtak varga the maximum point should be how much eight points from every bin ashtak varga right however while making the ashtak varga vara mehir is of the opinion that the ashtak varga of the ascendant should not be considered 
Ashtagvarga of the ascendant have to be left out while making the Sarva Ashtagvarga. And according to the experience, of course, Varamir works at the end of the day. Right? Because Varamir have given the gist of it. So basically, when you make the Sarva Ashtagvarga, you don't include the ascendant, but you only include the seven planets. Right? The, ashtag, the separate, separate Ashtagvarga of all the seven planets. Right? So basically, the maximum point that an Sarva Ashtagvarga is supposed to have. This is when you follow the Varamihir calculation. Parashar tells you to add the Ashtagvarga of the Ascendant as well. So there are two differences of, of opinions. And whenever there is a difference of opinion, I wish to go with Parashar. Sorry, I wish to go with Varamihir. So seven Ashtagvargas of different planets. And maximum of eight points in every Ashtagvarga makes a total of 56. 56 is the maximum point a house can get in this Sarvashtakvarga. The minimum point that a house can get is zero. But generally, they don't get a zero. And the half of it will be 28. So in this Sarvashtakvarga, any house having 28 or more than 28 points is good, beneficial, powerful, whatever you say. And less than 28 points is weak, troubled, problematic whatever way you want to look at it. This point is extremely clear. This is calculation. It is done. But to understand it is very important. Now, before we go further, what you have to understand it is Ashtagvarga, see, Ashtagvarga is made popular. Right? And generally when something is made a certain way, it is because of, I don't want to name propaganda. So what is Ashtagvarga? See, first of all, you have to understand the limitation. Ashtagvarga is an easy, simple method to assess anything generally. Hmm? It is not in-depth and a detail. You have to understand this particular point, right? When I say, like, take this example horoscope. There are 30 points in the fourth house, right? The midpoint was 28. So more than 28 is good, right? So fourth house is good. But what is good in the fourth house? Mother, family, happiness, vehicle, property, home, what? Everything. Or one particular. Isn't it a question? Like I'm doing a consultation. I say your fourth house is very good. So that means what? You have all the happiness in the world. Certainly, no one is having all the happiness in the world. That is very common. Right? Just a second. You cannot go this way. You can never go this way. Right? To take one more example. The minimum point is in the 8,000. 19 points. It is less than 28. So, 8,000 is very bad. That means this person should not be alive. He should die the next day he is born. But certainly that doesn't, that's not happening. Right? So when you say good or bad, as per Ashtakvarga, it is a common answer. Normal answer. Like, you know, you, you call me, you're like, sir, how are you? I will say, I'm fine. So this is, I am fine. You know what this fine means? This fine means nothing. It's just like I don't want to discuss my problems with you. Thank you. Thank you for asking. So nice. Done. Right? So, the first point that you need to understand is the Sarvashtak Varga is not a very important thing. You have to go under it. Okay? So, let's go under it. The 30 points in the 4,000 comes from all this culminative Ashtagvarga, right? But when you see the Ashtagvarga of sun, the points in 4006, good. So sun is supporting this Ashtagvarga, right? Sun is supporting the fourth house. In the Ashtagvarga of sun, there are six points. Sun indicates authority, power, whatever you say. 
सो दिस पर्सन हैव द हैप्पीनेस दैट कम्स थ्रू अथॉरिटी एंड पावर द सिग्निफिकेशन ऑफ सन व्हिच इज कॉमन विद द सिग्निफिकेशन ऑफ द फोर्थ हाउस राइट सो दिस पर्सन हैव अथॉरिटी एंड पावर एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स इन द मैटर्स ऑफ फोर्थ हाउस सो ही इज अथॉरिटेटिव इन हिज इन हिज होम एंड ही हैव द हैप्पीनेस दैट कम्स थ्रू नेम फेम एंड स्टेटस एंड ऑल राइट दैट्स फाइन now come to moon in the ashtak varga of moon moon is only giving three points to the fourth house so certainly moon is not supporting it that much which means which i will translate it mental peace which you see from the fourth house is certainly disturbed despite the fact that the fourth house is having 30 points that doesn't matter to me. because moon in his personal ashtak varga is not supporting the fourth house the things that come from moon mother happiness and mental peace these three things are disturbed right not that much disturbed as it will be when the fourth house is having less than 28 points culminatively but still it is lacking am i very clear to you so this should be very good because you have to be precise about it we what is good all happiness of life one person cannot have right when rama had sita he was not in the throne when he was in the throne sita was not there so sita the incarnation of vishnu is not having we are humans we are all not supposed to have no one will okay coming to the ashtakvarga of mars the fourth house mars is only giving two points mars indicates properties so the happiness of property is also lacking so happiness of mother mental comfort is lacking happiness of property is also lacking mars also indicates sibling so the home that this person is having the house this person is having is not liked by their siblings or rather there is a fight or you say enmity jealousy between siblings because of this particular property that he have made or the home that he have right this is what mars and peers and i am just taking the natural signification of mars and adding it with the fourth house it is very simple okay you just open significations of the fourth house significations of the mars add it you get the answer right it works like chemistry astrology works works like chemistry up to 40% right so this this is pretty simple now coming to the ashtak varga of mercury mercury is giving 6 points to the fourth house right 6 points here this is good this looks great what is common between mercury and fourth house education fourth house indicate education mercury indicate education education is common so this person is highly learned right and his knowledge gives him the satisfaction that oh i am intellectual Or whatever, right? What else Mercury indicate regarding the fourth house? There should be two three things. See, Mercury indicates a relative. Fourth house is mother, right? So there is a support. and happiness coming from the relatives of mother maternal uncle maternal grandfathers and all of them maternal aunts and everyone relative plus mother mother's relative right mercury relative fourth house mother mother's relative right easy with it Good. jupiter is giving five points to the fourth house jupiter is expansion fourth house is home so the expansion in home is there so the person is there and he have many children good friends good social support. this is what you mean by expansion right he will have one property then he will make two three more properties but mars is not supporting so he is not purchasing a land and making a home over it he is purchasing flats that's what he can do maximum right just give me a second
fine. So Mars is not supporting. Mars indicate land that is not supporting the fourth house. Jupiter, car of expansion is supporting it. So probably he is not purchasing many properties and making home over it. Rather he is purchasing flats or expanding his same property. You know, adding new things to the property. Venus <clears throat> in his particular Ashtaka Varga is also supporting the fourth house. Venus indicates common between Venus and the fourth house is vehicle. Right? So he has many vehicles also. Saturn in his Ashtaka Varga is not supporting the fourth house. It is only giving three points, right? Saturn is the cargo for misery. Fourth house indicates mind. So internally, mentally, He's feeling sad also. He is into misery also. Am I very clear about it? Sorry, you want to ask something? So, uh, just a small question. Mm. So, Jupiter and Venus giving five points. Can we say a person has a big, luxurious home? You are mixing Jupiter and Venus. Uh, yes, you can say, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, that you can say. And this is a good point. You can mix the two significations of the planet, right? Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, all three of them giving good. Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and all four of them giving good points, right? So Jupiter big, Venus luxurious. So big luxurious home, as you can say, you can mix these two, right? That you can do. So then uh, natural significations only will take. Yeah. So this was my second part, second point. Then Ashtak Varga. This was the second technique. Basically, I have seven techniques lined up to teach you and only one hour. So if I can cover the seven techniques, that is fine. If I cannot cover it, then some other day. <clears throat> okay. So the second point is, if you have noticed this complete thing, see, as I told you in the starting, now, be careful. Because if I keep on telling you every small, small, small point, now, it will take me 10 years to teach. You. Right? So you just be a bit attentive with the words and then you'll get it. So what I am not doing right now is not taking planets as the house lot. And that should not be taken. Why? The basic thing that I told you is one planet is made as an ascendant and other planets are seen from it. It is only the house placement of the planet, not the placement as the house lot. For example, sun in the third house will be good. It is a malefic in Upchaya. Sun in the third house will be good, right? It gives the point to the third house also. Right? It gives point to the third house as well. But suppose this sun is the seventh lord and goes to the third house. So do you think it is good? Third house indicates struggle and hardship. Third house is marriage. So struggle and hardship in marriage. This is not good at all. So the Ashtakvarga points are not allotted to planets according to their house lordship. It is only allotted to the planet as per their placement in a house only, not, not also in Rashi. There is no special point for a planet who is situated in an exalted Rashi or a debilitated Rashi, right? So the consideration of Rashi is not there. The consideration of planet as a house lord is also not there. It is only the consideration of planet as being situated in different houses. So this deals with house result plus the signification result. That's all. Because it primarily deals with houses, some astrologer had an opinion that Ashtagvarga should be calculated through Chalit Chakra, which is a facade. Chalit Chakra is the most illogical thing I have ever heard in my life. I always laugh on it whenever there's a discussion. And before he died, he wrote a book when he was 40, he died at the age of 80 and told his student that I wrote this wrong. You should not use Chalit Chakra. And when you are not sure why you are writing a book, God knows. Fame is a bad thing. Everyone wants it as soon as possible. But right time, right thing is the crux of life. This thing is extremely good. Now, because I have already told you that the natural significations of the planets work in Ashtakvarga and planets don't behave as a house lord or being situated in a particular Rashi, there comes the second technique. <clears throat> and that second technique is from every planet, one particular house is very important. Venus is the significator of marriage. 
So seventh house from Venus is very important, right? I will take some example horoscope. So that will be better. Gandhi ji. Love Gandhi ji. Okay. So let's come to the matters of the 10th house for Gandhi. Just a quick analysis that we did before. 10th house is having 35 points. Brilliant. More than 28. It is good. Like good in what sense? So if you quickly check the Ashtagvarga of all the different planets, you will see Mars is only giving four points. He was not aggressive in his profession. Never aggressive. That's why he boycotted Subhasandra Bhus. So aggression is not there, right? Mars is not supporting it. Venus is also not supporting it. So he, he was not roving in a car. He was into a train. That, that Harijan movement, if you remember. He used to travel through trains or Dandi March or on foot itself. So he's not using Venus in a profession. And he is also not using Saturn in a profession. So he was a politician who was quite against suppressing the labor class and the lower class. Otherwise, generally, for success, you have to suppress people. But this was the philosophy of Gandhi, to not suppress. Because Saturn is not giving good points. Saturn is only giving four points, right? So he have a balanced approach. Don't suppress. This is what Gandhian philosophy is. Right? Good to go. Now, just quickly coming to the second technique that I taught you. So, Veena indicates marriage. Hmm? So, the seventh house from Venus becomes very important in Ashtagvara. To quickly see the marriage, right? Because Ashtagvara works on Kargatva, significations, right? It doesn't work on house lordship. Though you can experiment looking at uh, Seven thousand points given in the seven thousand in the Ashtagvarga of the seventh lot. You can experiment with it. But however, the basic philosophy or rather understanding. See, if you remember techniques, there is a whole lot in astrology. You have to understand it. But understanding gives you a clear way, clear sight to do things. However, coming to my point. From sun, you have to see the Ashtagvarga points in the ninth house for the happiness of father. And Ashtagvarga points in the tenth house. For success, sun is the karga for success, success in profession. And this 9th house and 10th house is not from the ascendant. This 9th house and 10th house is from the placement of the planet. So the sun for Gandhiji is situated in the 12th house. 12th house is marked. It is, it is dark in color. 10th from this sun is the ninth house having four points. And tenth from the and ninth from the sun is the eighth house having four points. Gandhiji was a politician. But do you remember him as a successful politician? Gandhi is not looked as a politician, to be very honest with you. And his success in his profession is fairly clear that he succeeded in moving Britishers out of India. And for this, he had to do a partition which resulted, his, which resulted in his assassination. Right? So see a successful politician versus Gandhi, who is more a spiritual figure than a political figure. Now, though he was a politician, right? He is not Ramana Maharishi or Pramans Yogananda, right? He was a politician at the end of the day. But do we remember he's a successful politician? No. And the ninth house from Sir. Eighth house having four points. Once again, not supported. So what was the relationship of Gandhi with his father? He writes in his autobiography that I am very sad that when my father was dying, I was having physical relationship with my spouse, with, with my spouse which I am very ashamed of. Four points in the ninth house, you have to be ashamed only. What else you will be? Not being able to fulfill your duties as a... His father sent him to become a barrister in South Africa. What he became. His father must not like it at any given point of time. 
you spending his hard earned money that he uh, uh, saved for your visa and you know, the things are related for moon the fourth house from moon for the happiness and mother the 11th house from moon for the overall wealth hmm 10th house from moon for your influence on people have to be seen okay fourth house from moon moon is situated in the 10th house it is dark fourth from it is the ascendant which is having two points so was gandhi a happy go lucky person certainly not gandhi was not a happy go lucky person 11th from moon for the culminative wealth of the person moon is in the 10th house 11th from it will be the 8th house it is having two points so do you know gandhi is a rich person having a lot of money no but influence over people which is to be seen 10th from moon you see there are six points there 10th from moon moon is in the 10th house 10th from it will be the 7th house is having six points so gandhi was and is quite influential internationally right nelson mandela followed the gandhi philosophy and everyone in the world is following the gandhian philosophy so his influence on people is great but he is not rich and dissatisfied also you know keep being hungry and walking on food certainly cannot lead you to happiness but it was not also his department as well right the house of happiness is having 26 points only cumulatively less than 20 okay third from mars is to be seen for siblings and third from mars is having three points so some people or some books authors opine that third from mars is having three points so the person is supposed to have three siblings now this is pathetic this doesn't work let's so leave it third from mars is having three points which means gandhi will either not have siblings or even if he has siblings he, there will be no cordial relationship or not a good relationship with the siblings about the siblings of gandhi i don't know i don't know are the siblings of gandhi or anything like that. okay from mercury you have to see sixth from mercury to see the support from relatives hmm and fifth from mercury for education two houses mercury is in the ascendant fifth from it is the fifth house having six points so he was quite fifth house for intelligence scholarship and knowledge learning three things of the culminatively knowledge so fifth from mercury because mercury is in the ascendant fifth from it will be the fifth house and in the ashtavarga of mercury it is having six points so gandhi is considered a scholar right he did the translations of bhagavad gita and many things it and he is also quite learned and this quite learned he used to write letters which later on got leaked there is another scenario but the sixth from mercury which is the sixth house is only having three points which indicate he was not supported by his relatives so about jawaharlal nehru you know how he was supported by his father and other people right but what about gandhi was he supported by any of his relatives no fifth from jupiter is supposed to tell you about the children okay jupiter is in the 7th house fifth from it will be the 11th house and in the ashtavarga of jupiter 11th house is having five points so many children he had four children not five some people astrologers authors also opine that because uh, uh, the num number the number of points given in the fifth from jupiter also indicates the number of children one has gandhi is having five points he had four children so so certainly it is not working it it is not supposed to work because it limits to the number of children to eight only people have many more than eight also some people don't have tv at their homes so hi <laughs> this is a small joke Seventh from Venus is supposed to show you about marriage. Once again, the same technique. Seventh from Venus, uh, the number of points that are there, that num, that many relationships you will have. This these astrologers create fight in the family. Your wife looks at your horoscope. Oh, seventh from Venus, you are having eight points. You are such a bad person. See, it is not that way. 
Seven from Venus shows you the happiness of marriage. Seven from Venus because Venus is in the ascendant. Seven from Venus will be the seventh house, which in the Ashtakvarga of Venus is having one point only. Gandhi ji had a good marital life. So certainly Gandhi ji had a very good marital life. I, let me be very clear about it. This Kasturba Gandhi was not having a good marital life. So the story is this: you get married to a lady. And you were so indulgent to her that when your father died, you people were copulating. Okay. Then suddenly one day Gandhi decides that now I want to be a celibate Brahmachari. What Kasturba wants, no one asks. Kasturba, who is asking Kasturba? Gandhi ji decides to become a celibate, that's all. Kasturba wants to become or not, it doesn't matter. Then Kasturba is living in another room, only serving Gandhi, and then Gandhi is doing experiments with truth. And then how his experiments with truth went and what must have went over Kasturba, God. The one point of Venus tells that it is what is happening. So matter life at a given point of time is not happy. Either way. But the Gandhi is, this is another thing, right? Because Kasturba is from back in the 1800s, right? So there is some rules, regulations, which she cannot have another marriage, though they are Gujaratis also then. Gujaratis too don't have second marriage even now. As far as I know them. Right? They have the life of dedication and serving. Then same thing happened to the wife of uh, Modiji. <laughs> she is not getting married again. Or ever thought of getting married again. Right? So leaving that part aside. Tenth from Saturn. You have to see for profession. And eleventh from Saturn. Is gains from profession. Now it is not money. Gains from profession is the recognition of your work. Support of people. Saturn also indicates support. So support of people in your in the completion of your work. 11th from Saturn. And professional success is 10th from Saturn. Saturn is in the second house. 10th from Saturn will be the 11th house, which in the Ashtakvarga of Saturn is getting 5 points. Good result. More than 4, right? Good result. So he was quite successful in his profession. And he wanted Englishmen to leave India that they did. What happened in India is another scenario. 11th from Saturn is the support of people. That is having whooping seven points. Only one point is left. Otherwise, it must have been the top. So 11th from Saturn is having seven, seventh point. And he was quite supported by people. See his photo of Dante Marge and how many people are standing behind Gandhi. So you will know how he was supported. And 8th from Saturn for the death. Saturn in the second house, 8th from it will be the ninth house, which is having two points in the Shtagwara of Saturn. So his death was not very good. Right? He was murdered, assassinated by someone who also have a fan following. And there are a good funny following of Nathuram Godse as well. So this was the second point, okay? We are very clear about this. There is one more point, this, this third point, which I am telling you, okay, I'm just telling you, right? If, if you are not getting it, you can leave it. This, this is a bit complex. I will take five minutes to explain it. I will not take any example. I will just explain it. And if you don't understand it, skip it. There are many more things. But still, because I am up to this point, so there's one very particular thing about Gandhi and his children. He had four children. And the eldest of him hated Gandhi. Hated him so much that he was there at the funeral of Gandhi. And people asked his name. But he refused to come or tell that I am here. And in the end, haven't done the last rites of Gandhi. Being the eldest child who should do it, and he was also present at the moment. Because he was hating Gandhi like him. So, why this thing is happening? Despite the fact that there are five points in the fifth house to Jupiter. So, to know that, you, you should know which planets are giving those five points. This is known as Prastar Ashtagvarga, where you, Prastar means elaborated. So, where you elaborate the five planets giving point in fifth from Jupiter. So, for that, I have to right click here 
and click on show PAV, the star asterisk varga of Jupiter. Now you get these five planets who are giving the point in the fifth. Jupiter is in the seventh house, highlighted in dark. Fifth from it is the eleventh house, which was originally having the five points, and these five points are given by Mercury, Mars, Ascendant, Moon, and Venus. Five planets. Now you only have to take natural significations, no house lordship. If you take house lordship, the karka for enmity will be Jupiter the sixth lord, and Jupiter is not giving any point in fifth to Jupiter, right? So that's why house lordship should not be used. Coming back to my point, well, who is the natural significator of enmity? So Mars. Yeah, Mars. The Martian commander in chief, he is the enemy to, he is dealing with enemies. So Mars is the cargo for enemy, cheating and other things. You see fifth from Jupiter, Mars is giving a point. So certainly there is enmity with a particular child. Right? And Venus and Moon and Mercury are also giving points. So one of the child because of Mercury is to become a scholar like Gandhi. One child have to be very much connected to Gandhi because of moon. And one child have to live the luxuries of life because of Venus giving point in the fifth from the Ashtagvarga of Jupiter. Am I very clear? There is one more very important thing. If you can Yes. By the way, the four children of uh, Gandhi were Harilal Gandhi, Devdas Gandhi, Ramdas Gandhi, and Manilal Gandhi. Out of them, Harilal Gandhi was the eldest one who was present at Rajghat when he was getting cremated. People called his name and he haven't told that I am here. He was disguised and hated his father like that. And about the other Gandhis, you do a Wikipedia search and you will know. Now, there is one very particular point. Why? See, Gandhi is having four children. Fifth from Jupiter, uh, the total points in the fifth from Jupiter can show you about the number of children only if you exclude the point given by the ascendant astrologer. Then it will become four. And he had four children, right? So this is the brilliance of Varamir. You know, when you do astrology in real life, when you practice it, you know how important Varamir is. So in the case of any confusion, remember Varamir, but Ashtagvarga is a copyrighted research of Parasha. Not a Varamir. Right? So Varamir is not inventing anything. Though he have invented many things. His prime duty is to put a stamp on this is working, this is not working, this is working, this is not working. This is his prime work that he has done. Stamping things. He invented 20% of the things. 40%, I should not say 20%. He invented 40% of the techniques. And 60% was authorizing. This is working, this is not working, this should be used, this should be avoided. Okay. So this point is extremely, extremely clear. No confusion about it. Now, as I told you, the, we'll quickly leave it. and We'll come back to the point. Okay. So one, two, three, another simple techniques. We have some five, seven minutes left. So running through it. <clears throat> now there, is, there are a few, few points. Ashtakvarga is just one major technique I will tell you first. Then many uh, small techniques. Okay. So there is a technique related to transit. So generally, transits are seen with respect to Ashtakvarga. Any planet is transiting any house. You are supposed to go to the Ashtakvarga of that planet and see the Rashi they are transiting in is having how many points? Four, more than four, less than four. So for Gandhiji, second house is having zero points. Which means when Saturn goes through Scorpio in transit, it is going to be very pathetic for Gandhiji. Hmm? Right? When Gandhiji was assassinated, 30 October 1947, the same year, or what? Yes, 1947. Wikipedia search that later. Okay, I will 
थर्टियथ जनवरी नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट He was born in October. Thirtieth January, nineteen forty-eight. He was assassinated. Let's see the transit. And only two things we have to see: the transit of Saturn, two major planets. The so transit of Saturn. It was in Capricorn. Mars was in Leo. And Jupiter is in Scorpio. Three things you can remember: hmm? Saturn in Cancer, Mars in Leo. and jupiter in scorpio let's come back to the horoscope of kartik saturn was going through cancer hmm having four points in his astrological mixed results mars was going through leo having five points now mars is a malefic so the probability to get assassinated is very very strong and jupiter the karaka for life etc is going through the Second house, which is also having seven points, so it should not be bad for Gandhi. Then why it is bad? This is the question I am dealing with. But this technique is good for the general person. It is good for the general person. If Gandhi was not assassinated at that point of time, then what must have happened? I leave it up to you. It is few months later. Some major things happen, right? But leave. So the point. So first of all, the transit of a planet is seen with respect to the rashis the planet is going in, and the points the planet gets in that rashi. So if you are going through Sade Sati, and your Saturn is in twelfth to moon or in the moon sign or second to moon. But that sign is getting good points in the stock work of Saturn. No, sorry, sir. That's why the people become prime ministers in Saturday, Saturday. And you are afraid of Saturday, Saturday. Why? Why? Is Saturn your enemy? If he is your enemy, he will uh, rather throw a meteorite on your head. He will not do this. He has greater things to do. He can finish the whole country. An enmity with a single person is not his level. the point is the real thing for transit is when saturn transits eight from see there are few bad houses the eighth house is the one of the major house when saturn is transiting eight from any planet or any house it tends to destroy that house or the planet okay and also the significator so example saturn was transiting in cancer when he died the planet saturn is transiting over he will destroy that planet and the planet saturn is transiting in sixth from he will destroy that planet the signification of the planet and also the house right this is to be seen from d1 also and d9 also. now there are a whole lot of formulas sir have told you four things and to apply this four you will end up the khichdi i don't know what is khichdi called in english that you will not like you know we are here to make shahi paneer so that is we are not able to make so the basic point is you check the planet whom saturn is transiting over and the planet from whom saturn is transiting in the eighth house both in d1 and d9 and then use the ashtak varga And see which planet is weaker as per the astrologer. That gets a hit. Or which house is weaker as per the astrologer, and that gets a hit. Okay. So to illustrate it, uh, Saturn was going through Cancer. If you check Navamsha, he was seventh from Jupiter. And seventh from Saturn, seventh from him, sorry, eighth from Jupiter, and eighth from himself. Saturn, from the position of Jupiter and Saturn in D nine, Saturn's transit into Cancer, which he was transiting when Gandhi ji died, he's transiting an eighth from himself and eighth from Jupiter as per the Navamsha, and transiting over no planet as per Navamsha. As per D one chart, 
he is transiting over rahu and gu and not transiting in it to any planet right it it uh, saturn is basically transiting in the ascendant is eighth from the third house and because there is no planet in the third house no transit out of all these planets jupiter saturn rahu and moon for rahu you don't have an ashtak varga right and rahu also don't have many major significations you can nearly call out rahu is this transit bad for the children of gandhi jupiter or for gandhi himself saturn saturn is the car of longevity if you remember saturn is the car of longevity is it bad for gandhi ji is it bad for jupiter the children of gandhi ji or is it bad for the mother of gandhi ji moon or motherland of gandhi ji the mother motherland all moon all the concepts of mother goes to moon right it can be bad for any of them right the bad uh, the bad to child can also happen when uh, saturn is transiting in eighth from the fifth lord to go to eighth from the fifth lord fifth lord is saturn he should transit in gemini right the transit of uh, saturn into gemini will be eighth from the fifth lord which have to be bad for children this was the time when uh, saturn was transiting to gemini was the time when hiralal gandhi and mahatma gandhi had the difference that they had first time however see all these three planets in the ashtakarka moon is having seven points he cannot get destroyed jupiter in his Ashtag moon is situated in the 10th house highlighted getting seven points there moon cannot be destroyed jupiter is situated in the 7th house getting five points there he cannot be destroyed saturn is situated in the second house and he is getting zero points there so saturn is to be destroyed so his longevity was cut there was no problem with child and there was no problem with mother or motherland but once again there is a very fine point that you must not have noticed saturn is transiting in eighth from saturn in navamsha but i am still checking the ashtavarga points of saturn as per the d1 chart only don't make an ashtavarga for d9 because this way you have 16 ashtavarga charts and then rather than khichdi what you will make you know see principle have to be clear straight forward a, mi a mixture of five principle leads you to confusion rather than leading you to a result and if you are confused in analysis leave prediction so that will be super confused you will have a bad marriage but a good spouse are you how does good bad marriage happens with a good spouse i never understood it be bad marriage with bad spouse good marriage with good spouse because spouse is a concept of marriage itself no you can say you have good marriage with a bad person that is okay good marriage with a bad spouse spouse is marriage only let's so let's be very clear about it okay this point is done done okay i will be quickly teaching you one small technique that's all finish we will finish it i, I we have two three things left ashtak varga remedy ashtak varga house comparison etc etc most probably some other time some other day i have two quick things so na house comparison through ashtak varga is pretty simple for that you use the sarva ashtak varga that is combinative analysis of all the different ashtak vargas so for gandhi ji i have to see whether he is more relaxed and comfortable or more devoted to his work so i have to do a comparison between the fourth house relaxed and 10th house dedicated to work so i see the ashtakarka points in 4th house versus the ashtakarka points in the 8th 10th house 4th house is having 26 ashtakarka points and the 4th uh, house is having 26 ashtakarka point and the 10000 35 ashtakarka points indicating that he is not much relaxed or happy but is more dedicated to his professional life right
are we very clear if you see longevity versus death 7000 mark lagna is the health just opposite to lagna what what doesn't come into lagna comes to the opposite of lagna right comes to 7000 what i don't have my wife have this is a complementary principle so two different poles of it so lagna is having 22 points and the seventh house is having 21 points so lagna is having more points marak is having less than number of points indicating that he is supposed to have a long life so not long life but okay he was old when he died not young right and the same thing see third house is effort 10th house is success so whether you have to do more effort and get less success or you should do less effort and more success third house versus the 10th house so third house gandhi is having 28 points and 10th house is having 35 points so less effort more success for gandhi right so you can do a comparison of houses also using ashtakaraga this leads you to a good result whether the wife is happy or gandhi is happy lagna versus the 7th house certainly gandhi is more happy with 22 points rather than his wife who is having 21 points only but take 7000 mark only not as marriage for marriage seven from me okay so go, be very clear don't okay this is the, uh, the last thing that i wanted to say was the dasha of gandhi so gandhi ji be very careful about it your people's wrong answer on 30th january 1948 gandhi ji was assassinated Which was Jupiter Dasha Ketu and Tr Dasha Rahu Mahadasha. Hmm. So Rahu Ketu, we don't have an Ashtakarga points for that. Just just take me Jupiter. Hmm. Now Jupiter Dasha is nineteen forty to nineteen fifty six. It's a total of sixteen years, and Gandhi ji dies in nineteen forty eight. so almost by the mid of the dasha he dies so this dasha at max can be 50% good 50% bad should not be completely bad or completely good he lived up to the mid of the dasha you get how do we say the mixed result mixed result is more like like if you if you are going to have a marital life of 20 years 20 years is very small sorry 40 years and if the result is mixed first 20 years are good later 20 years are bad or the first 20 years are bad and later 20 years are good depending on whether the planet is primarily a benefic or a benefic if the planet is primarily a benefic if the planet is in a male rashi bad result comes first good result comes after that if in a female rashi good result comes first bad result after that it's a basic point okay the thing is jupiter dasha is mixed and to know the result of jupiter dasha what you have to do is you have to see the number of points jupiter is getting in the rashi where he is situated and the two houses of jupiter the number of points that they are getting so jupiter uh, the mula trikona rashi of jupiter comes into the 6th house sorry pisces comes into the 6th house getting 6 points jupiter is situated in the 7th house getting 5 points and the mula trikona rashi of jupiter sagittarius comes into the third house getting one point is it okay the maximum point can be eight in each house which in the three house should be 24 so basically the house where planet is situated and the two house is lorded by the planet adding the total ashtakarga point the planet gets in all three houses should be 12 or more than 12 to be good otherwise bad so let's add the point 6 plus 5 plus 1 is 12 mix it result as i told you in the starting so mid of the dasha he dies before that he was quite successful everything he did englishman went out of the country partition happened he became the mahatma that he is now rashtrapita that he is now and his photo in on the notes which we love to see every day and right so the basic thing is the rashi of the planet both the rashi of the planet and the place where the planet is situated in nashtakarga of the planet should have more than 12 points adding these three houses 
for the dasha to be good, less than 12 points for the dasha to be bad, and exactly 12 points for the dasha to be mixed. And because Jupiter is situated in a male Rashi, but is retrograde, so the result should be reversed. So first good results came, then bad results came. However, because he is going to die, it can only come in the middle of the dasha. If the death happens in the starting, then how the dasha is mixed? Right? So use a little bit of logic into this. And Admi Pele Marhi Jayaga to Chafal Konosta Guru Bogega. So that you have to keep into consideration, right? I will leave the class here, okay, because I have to do a consultation in some 40 minutes from now. So let's sum it up. And there are two uh, techniques left out. So maybe either I will leave them or uh, will write something on it or anything like that. Then we will do, right? So thank you for joining.